Hey folks, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today we're going to talk about T3 syndrome or low T3 and some of the reasons why you don't convert T4 into T3. Now you may see this as many different names, but ultimately the end result is low T3 levels. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you one of the most common reasons behind T4 to T3 conversion. I'll explain to you where I personally like to see the ranges of total T3 and free T3. I'll explain to you why T3 or T4, T3 combination thyroid replacement hormones is not enough. And finally, I'm going to explain to you one of my favorite tests that I use with patients every day that help me understand where the breakdown is occurring and why they're not converting that T4 to T3 in the first place. Now, you'll remember in past videos that I've done that T4 is the inactive thyroid hormone and T3 is the active thyroid hormone, okay? So when you take Synthroid or Levothyroxine, you're really taking T4. And when your doctor prescribes you Synthroid or Levothyroxine, what they're hoping is that your body is gonna naturally convert that T4 into T3. And some of you who are watching this video may have found yourself on many different forums um, that are, are heavy believers in T3 replacement only. And while I certainly believe that there's a place for T4 and T3 replacement, I still believe that in the vast majority of people, this still misses so many of the, the underlying metabolic causes. It's very easy to think that if I'm low in T3, well, then I should just be able to take a T3 replacement. And if I'm low in T4, well, then I should just be able to take a low T4 replacement. And so there's much more to the picture than that. And like I said, while this might seem like common sense on the outer surface and it makes sense, that approach, again, doesn't address the cause of why your body can't convert the T4 into T3 and ultimately why you're hypothyroid. Think of it, <coughs> excuse me, think of it like this. If I was driving down the road and I had a hole in my gas tank and I was leaking gas, well, it makes sense to fill up my gas tank because, you know, obviously I have no gas and my, my needle's on empty. But it makes even more sense to find out where I'm losing gas and where I'm leaking glass gas in the first place, okay? Now there are several reasons for, for poor T4 to T3 conversion, but the one we're gonna address in today's video is the connection between the gastrointestinal microflora and your T3 levels. Now like I said earlier, these days doctors are so concerned with tinkering around with the levels of T4 that they completely forgotten to ask the question, why are the thyroid levels low in the first place? And this is really the most logical question that should really be asked and most importantly investigated. Now, one of the keys to today's video is making sure that you get your T3 levels measured as well as your free T3 levels. And while you're at it, if you can, also try to get your reverse T3 levels. That would be really nice to have, okay? So the thing here is by having your T3 levels tested and your reverse T3 levels, you're also gonna be able to figure out your T3 reverse T3 ratio, which many researchers believe that it's even more accurate than having your TSH and free T4 levels. So if you want to know more about reverse T3 levels, uh, T3, reverse T3 ratio, I've done two or three videos on these topics as well. So point being, get your T3 levels checked, get your free T3 levels checked, get your reverse T3 levels checked. And if you've already done that, then I want you to pull out your blood work and I want you to take a look at the results. Now, don't look at the ranges that come with your blood work, okay? Most people still feel lousy being in those ranges. So instead, we're gonna look at, and I'm gonna give you what the functional lab ranges are, okay? Now, the functional lab range are the ranges where researchers have found people feel their best. And if we're talking about your total T3 levels, this is gonna be between 100 and 180. I personally like to see these levels between 140 and 160, okay? Now, the functional free T3 levels should really fall between three and four, okay? That's very important. And that should give you at least some reference ranges to shoot for when you get your T3 levels and your free T3 levels checked. But remember what I said at the beginning here, our goal is to uncover why we're not converting T4 into T3. And that brings us back to the point of this video, which is in how it relates to the health of your gastrointestinal system. Okay, it's no surprise that many people with thyroid disease also have irritable bowel syndrome, they have uh, GERD, they have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, they have leaky gut, or they have some other type of gastrointestinal problem. And in a few minutes, it's gonna make so much sense why. The health of your gut is one of the most critical systems to properly evaluate when you have hypothyroidism, when you have Hashimoto's, and, and when you have low T3. And so the gut can interfere with thyroid function in many different ways. 
The most obvious one is nutrient absorption. Okay, I want you to think of it like this. Low T3 levels causes low hydrochloric acid production and low hydrochloric acid production causes poor thyroid function. It's a really vicious cycle that keeps going round and round and round as you can see. And when you have low hydrochloric acid production, you can't absorb things. You can't absorb things like calcium, you can't absorb uh, iron, you can't absorb zinc, you can't absorb B vitamins, you can't absorb vitamin D, and there are a lot of other different vitamins and minerals that your body needs in order to make thyroid hormones. I mean, just think about it. How many of you watching today's video are deficient in vitamin D? I would probably venture that most of you watching this have had at some point in time low vitamin D levels, and now that you're supplementing, those levels are coming up. The next thing is, is think about all the people uh, that have low thyroid, but they also have GERD. They also have acid reflux or bloating. You, many people out there, in fact, over 80% of people with reflux, the problem is not too much acid. It's not enough acid. And so if we think about the gut flora for just a moment, when the gut flora becomes unbalanced, we often see things like bloating, and we see things like irritable bowel syndrome. We, we see yeast overgrowth and we have inflammation, and we have low levels of pancreatic enzymes, and we have parasites, and we have bacterial infections. So we know that the microflora is a big part of our immune system. It's a big part of B vitamin production. It's a big part of inflammation. We often see parasites with people with low thyroid. And so when your microflora is disrupted, you can lose upwards of 20% of that thyroid hormone output. And if you're like most people with low T3 levels, you can't afford to lose an additional 20%. Now, for those of you who want the specifics, okay, the who, what, where, when, and why, how this all happens, I'm gonna get technical for just a moment in terms of how the gut is specifically involved in that T4 to T3 conversion. So if we start from the very beginning, your thyroid is stimulated by something called TSH, which comes from the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland stimulates the thyroid by TSH, uh, TSH acts on the thyroid, and then the thyroid makes T4 and T3. The vast majority of that T4 is actually, uh, I'm sorry, the vast majority of that T4 uh, made by the thyroid now has to get converted into T3. So that T3 uh, gets converted in the GI tract in the form of T3 sulfate, uh, as well as T3, uh, or I'm sorry, triiodothyroacetic acid, or T3AC. And a small portion of that T3 is also going to get converted into reverse T3. So this is why I said having that reverse T3 is important. Now the conversion of T3 sulfate and T3AC into active T3 requires an enzyme called intestinal sulfatase. So for, forget about all that other stuff. Just realize that the bacteria release a, an enzyme okay, called sulfatase. And this enzyme is made by the bacteria that are living in your gut. And if you have low levels of these good gut bacteria, because your gut has been bombarded with antibiotics and acid reflux pills and birth control pills and coffee and a high sugary diet, a bad diet, and all those things we've talked about in a video titled Causes of Intestinal Dysbiosis, then you don't produce sufficient amounts of this intestinal sulfatase. And when you don't produce enough intestinal sulfatase, you can't have optimum conversion of T4 to T3. So the last thing I want to go over with you in, in today's video are the 10 things that you want to look for in a stool test that can help you understand if the health of your gut and poor T4 to T3 conversion um, is taking place. Okay, so here's what you want to look for in a functional stool test. The first one is that it should be a, what's called a DNA amplification probe. Okay, that's very, very important. You just don't want any stool test. You want it to be a, to be a, a DNA uh, amplification probe. Okay, this is very specialized technology. Second, you want to include not only the predominant anaerobes, which is the kind of anaerobes, but you also want to have a quantity of those good bacteria. Okay, very important. Next is you want to ha have your secretory IgA levels tested. This is an immunoglobulin, and this is the first line of the immune system defense. This indicates uh, whether or not the mucosal barrier has lost its integrity. And that's very important because if we have high levels of secretory IgA, this is associated with more of an active infection. And if we're dealing with low levels of secretory IgA, we know that the immune system is, has kind of taken a beating and it's kind of losing the battle, okay? And so the next thing you want to look for is you want to look for a test, a functional stool test that looks at long and short chain fatty acids. That's very important. 
okay? Next, you wanna look for a test that evaluates pancreatic elastase. So you'll remember that we talked about vitamin D levels often being low. Well, part of what the pancreas does is it releases pancreatic lipases, and these lipases in turn help you break down and absorb fats. So not only vitamin D, but also vitamins uh, A, D, E, and K, okay? So the next uh, thing that you wanna look for is parasites, okay? Things like cryptosporidium, things like giardia, things like E. histolytica, things like H. pylori, okay? The next thing you wanna look for is something, is a, is a marker for inflammation, which is known as calprotectin. And like I said earlier, this is an inflammatory marker that distinguishes non-inflammatory bowel diseases from inflammatory bowel diseases. So in other words, things like uh, celiac disease and Crohn's and, <clears throat> and ulcerative colitis. The next thing I said uh, that I feel is very important that I test for is also for yeast and fungus overgrowth. I also wanna look at fecal cholesterol levels. And finally, I wanna look at something called beta-glucuronidase. Beta-glucuronidase is actually a very, very important thing to look for because this is a marker into um, how well your body is breaking down estrogens and toxins and whether or not those toxins are, are being reabsorbed into the body, okay? So these markers are just 10 markers that I feel offer a, a fantastic window into the functional health of your GI tract. A test like this will really shed a lot of light on the connection between your thyroid and your gut. So in bringing this video to a close, I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions, if you want to find out how to work with our, our office, you want to get in touch with us, the best way to do that is just by visiting our website, drhagmeyer.com, and submit us a contact us form, okay? Someone from our office will get in touch with you, and then uh, we can talk about how we work with patients in the U.S., how we work with patients internationally. And uh, until next time, until our next video, keep digging, searching, digging for those layers. Don't give up because you can get better, okay? You just have to look at all of these different pieces that are part of the thyroid puzzle and start connecting these dots, okay? Well, until next time, take care.